All right, with assignment six, we leave raster imaging behind for a while. We leave pixel-based images behind, and instead we are going to be delving into the world of vectors. So how can we come to grips with this a little bit? Well, if we log in to ACES and we go to our Canvas page, let's start by just looking at the assignment sheet, right? because you always have that as a source of information beyond my words. Now, what's also different about this next project, if we go to assignment sheets in the Canvas course, is that it is not just a vector assignment, it's also a, an assignment that has a theme, right? That we change every semester. So we've always done fantasy creatures and fantasy landscapes, and you brought your own ideas to that. But here, we're going to do what's called a logo mashup. But all that means is you have to start with the idea of a logo that already exists. The one I think I'm gonna work with is Twitter and the little bird logo from Twitter, right? Think of a logo that always exists, and you're gonna redesign or make your own version of it transform it fully into your own thing with this theme in mind. The, the theme in mind is, here we go. It was voted on by Art Club this semester and it's melting macabre. Right, so let's look what that means. All right, so, so macabre, which is spelled macabre, great means disturbing and horrifying because of involvement with or depiction of death and injury yes. right Let it happen. so those of you who like skulls those of you who like monsters Ooh. those of you who like creepy kind of halloween oh things oh. <laughs> is that is that honest being born wait go like no what is that <laughs> <laughs> so there's all kinds of crazy things now Now let's compare that with melting. Right? <laughs> so this this is an example of some flat digital graphic imagery that shows melting. And because this little girl who's kind of cute is melting, it's kind of macabre, right? So that's the theme, melting macabre. You can interpret it any way you like. Those are creepy. I guess it's the exact one. Now let's put them together. Let's see what we get. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> now, this doesn't mean you have to do something horrifying, right? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> but you certainly can, right? So have fun with it. There's lots of inspiration out there. Hopefully, you'll find that theme inspiring. Now, here's the fun part though. I want you to take an existing logo, an existing thing. It doesn't necessarily need to be a logo. So this takes, it looks like kind of like a My Little Pony, right? And, and really plays with it. And if we did, this is one I found in my research I really liked. There's like lots of melting Mickeys, which of course are infringing on copyright. But this one especially. Yeah, so this would be a good, good example. All right, anyway, so that's our theme. Let's look at the assignment sheet. So here is the difference. We are using all new file formats for this. We are not using JPEG. We are not using GIF. We are not using PSD. We are not using Photoshop. Are we using PNG? we will be saving our EPS vector files as PNGs in order to put them onto PhotoBucket. So the EPS is what's called a portable vector format file, and we will be using this new program called Adobe Illustrator, the AI, to make these vector files. All right. So go ahead and click on your Adobe Illustrator link. Just to, It takes a while to get started up. And while we're doing that, I'm going to show you this video that tries to explain the difference between raster files, like what we've been using in Photoshop, 
and vector files, right? And this was made by a student in this class, and it was made in a program called Flash. Flash is an animation program. We just did animation, but we did compositing animation and raster-based animation, which took a lot of memory. Flash is vector-based animation, so it takes a lot less memory, but you need a special program to view it and to play it. So he made this video all in Flash. So this video is all made with vectors. All right. Bitmaps versus vector graphics. Bitmaps are a collection or an array of bits, which are also known as pixels. Up until now, this is likely the only kind of graphic you have in your hand. However, there is another one. Uh, vector graphics are paths which are plotted through mathematical algorithms. The method of using these algorithms was spearheaded by a man named Pierre Bessier. Pierre was a French engineer, and he had an idea. He came up with a way of using the Castel Jews algorithms to fly an error between two algorithms, and those curves can in turn be used for any number of industrial applications. He was a leading influence on how CAD and CAM machines work and how 3D models are created, and it's all deciphered. Because vectors are processed in this way, they don't store a finite number of pixels. It can be scaled to an infinite size with no pixelation. This means it can be used for something as small as a stamp to a package like a bottle, a poster, all the way up to a planet-sized billboard, and can do it all from the same file. Okay, that is the big advantage of vectors. That one file can be outputted at any size and be perfectly clean at any size, all from one discrete file. So for graphics, if you're going to make a logo, you need it to fit on a business card. You need it to fit on a billboard. You need to fit it on the side of the truck. You need to be able to give it to the t-shirt company to make t-shirts, hat company, mouse pad company, all these things. So much easier to just give them one vector file, one portable vector file, an EPS, and then whatever size they want to print it, it will be perfect versus having to resize a new resolution for each project, which would take up a lot more memory because it's memorizing each pixel. So what does all of this actually mean? Why do we still use bitmaps? Isn't vector far superior to raster in every way? Well, it is and it isn't. See, vectors and bitmaps are good at different things. Vectors are good at making clean, simple shapes, which usually use a limited color palette. They're also perfect for images that need to be scaled larger or smaller. Bitmaps, on the other hand, are good at detail, usually things like color shifts. They're also far better for sub-48 pixel designs like desktop icons. Bitmaps are also how photographs and scans are stored since it's impossible to capture an image as a vector. For example, sometimes you need a complex image. Uh, digital paintings can only work as bitmaps because in a bitmap you have full control over each pixel. Vectors can only store a few pieces of information about the contents of the path. One is the stroke, the outline. Second is the fill, which is the color or the color gradient, which is placed inside the path. When you create vector graphics, you're basically accomplishing your goal by doing one of three things, manipulating the stroke, fill, or the shape of the path itself. So you may be asking right about now, if vectors are based on algorithms, does that mean that I have to do math to use them? Well, thanks to Pierre, the answer is no. Manipulating vector shapes is, is easy and completely math-free. There's also brush and pencil tools which can turn natural strokes into, ve into vector shapes. Also, just like in a bitmap program, you can use layers and layer groups for a vector. But these are just the basics, so take time to experiment with these programs and learn for yourself. All right. That is a well done explanation, right? <laughs> but not so good we want to look at it again. So let's look at this really quickly before I, I introduce uh, what the process is going to be. So you're in Illustrator. Just say File New. Now, unlike a Photoshop file, when we start it new, it's going to ask you how many pixels, right? There is no pixel resolution in an Illustrator file. Instead, there is what is called the artboard. And the artboard is simply, what do you want to pretend you're designing this on? <laughs> right? Because the artboard can be changed at any time. So 
what we're going to do is basically 18 by 24 inches. That's kind of the largest standard size. It's like a big poster. So let's think we're going to make this logo by hand. We're going to paint it, but we want it to look big and impressive for our presentation. So we're going to paint it on a big piece of paper. We only want one artboard. What's the orientation of your logo? Well, my logo is, I already kind of know what I'm thinking. So I'm going to use a, a landscape format orientation because my Twitter bird melting is wider than it is tall. But it basically doesn't matter, right? So then we, we create it. Let's give it our name and assignment six. And we call this project the logo mashup. Just because you're making your own original logo, you're going to make it in black and white and color, but it should start with some something that already exists in the culture. It doesn't even need to be a logo that's in the culture. So Mickey Mouse isn't a logo, right? But you could use that as a start for your idea. Okay. So when we open up that new file, we create it. You'll notice that Illustrator takes a little bit of time. And I'm going to go ahead and quit Photoshop so that Adobe has more um, memory and processing to dedicate to this. This looks a lot like Photoshop, but it's almost completely different in every way. <laughs> so, so we are going to relate it back to that shape exercise we did. So let's try to remember what that shape exercise was like. First of all, we have layers. Layers are over here but the layers are only for our own convenience. So let me show you what I mean. This looks like the shape tool in Photoshop. Sure enough, the shape tool in Photoshop is a vector tool based on this Illustrator tool. So let's, let's make some shapes. Let me start with an ellipse. I'm going to draw an oval, and then I let go. Already this looks different than Photoshop, right? So every shape, that you make in Illustrator is called a path. There are closed paths and open paths. Closed paths are like this shape where they connect with each other. If I use one of my favorite tools, the, uh, the pen tool, right? It's not quite like what we've done in Photoshop, but I can click and then I can click somewhere else and if I click and hold and drag, I can make it a curve. These are the Bezier curves that the video was talking about. This is what's called an open path. Right? So notice how that doesn't connect. But if I use the pen tool and I draw, and then I hover next to the the beginning of the path, you see how there's a little circle that appears next to the pen? That's showing me that I'm going to close it. Now the pen tool is good for being really exact. The tool that's my favorite is the pencil tool. And you'll find that underneath the brush, but you have to go into the drawer to the second one down. The pencil tool, you just click and draw, but you're still making paths. So that's an open path. But if I hover close to the beginning where I get the circle, that's a closed path. But this is why I love the pencil tool. This is what Photoshop cannot do. If I double click on it, I can set the pencil tool to be more smooth versus more accurate. So accurate means, and I'm just using my mouse right now, every little bump and squiggle I do, Illustrator will pick up. So that's a really complicated shape, right? But if I make it all the way smooth, and its default is to be right in the middle, and I make that same shape or something as crazy as it, before it renders as a vector, it's going to smooth it out to where it looks more pleasing. See the difference? So it kind of takes out all the little jitter from your hand. This is especially good for what's called digital inking, having that really clean line, that clean curve. Now the pencil tool is relatively new. You know, it's within the last 10 years of Illustrator, whereas Illustrator has been around for a long time, a lot longer than that. 
So a lot of people just like to use the pin.